Welcome to the IREL Podcast. Are you sick and tired of real estate gurus pitching their next free construction deal only to find out years later they were completely wrong? Worried the next overseas conference you spend thousands to attend will only be used to sell overpriced lots and deserted developments? Join thousands of other international real estate seekers who are looking for their place in paradise without the sales pitch. Straight from your host, Taylor White. If you're a homeowner or property manager and want to put your vacation rental in front of over 62 million travelers each month and earn incredible returns of up to $56,000 per year, then you must list it on the number one vacation rental marketplace. Head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash rental to get started. Hey everybody and welcome to episode 29 of the IREL podcast. I'm your host, Taylor White. I am very excited to head south of the border when I sit down and speak with Nick Fong from Los Cabos Agent in Los Cabos, Mexico. And as always, we'll get the true story on the Los Cabos real estate scene and have you coming away wanting to investigate its local property market further or cross it off your shortlist entirely and continue listening right now from Nick. You will learn why a licensed real estate and mortgage broker from Chicago fell in love with Los Cabos and the reasons why he owes it all to his wife. Better explains how the Los Cabos real estate market has fared since starting its crash in 2008 and what his on-the-ground perspective is for the very near future. Details what the difference is between the two popular locations of San Jose del Cabo and Cabo San Lucas and shares the specific locations he is recommending today. Gives us the real truth on if getting local financing is a possibility and then uncovers exact case studies from clients he is helping today and much more. And don't forget, if you're listening to this podcast and want to grab Nick's contact details, links on buying or selling Los Cabos real estate, or any other show notes, head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash 29. Pour me another lime margarita on the rocks, only with the best tequila, and don't be stingy with the good stuff. In case you can't tell, I'm excited. Let's get Nick on the phone. What is going on, Nick? It's Taylor White. I'm excited to have you on the podcast today, straight from Los Cabos, Mexico, so we can get to know you personally. Tell us more about yourself and where your stomping grounds were before you ended up in Los Cabos. Hey, Taylor. Uh, nice to be here. I actually am originally from Chicago, Illinois. I was born and raised in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. I had gone to the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana, where I received my real estate degree in in finance and so after graduating kind of diverted a little from my real estate uh, studies and went into IT consulting for five years gave me some opportunity to travel around the world and I in that process visited a little known place at least to me at the time called Cabo San Lucas and after that one week vacation to Los Cabos in a matter of just months, I got back to my passion of real estate in the early 2000s, got my real estate broker's license, started my own brokerage firm, and started selling real estate in the Chicagoland area, and also writing real estate mortgage loans for my clients. After I was practicing for a few years in Chicago, I started to visit uh, Cabo just a little bit more, mainly because on my very first trip, uh, to Cabo, I met my wife. And in the process of doing a long distance relationship, I started to entrench myself a little bit more in the real estate market here in Los Cabos. And first tried starting out with some real estate investments and then moving on to with real estate brokerage, which as it stands now is Los Cabos agent. Well, Nick, I have to ask, it's February, you're from Chicago, you're in Los Cabos, what's the weather like? You know, one of the beautiful things about Los Cabos is that the weather's absolutely perfect all year round. It is sunny and about 80 degrees right now. 
<laughs> jealous. And then you have mentioned two things already, Cabo San Lucas and Los Cabos. Can you better explain how those places relate? Sure, not a problem. Well, Los Cabos in Spanish means the capes, and Cabo San Lucas is just one of those capes that exists in Los Cabos. The other famous cape is San Jose del Cabo. So when people refer to Cabo, Los Cabos, Cabo San Lucas, San Jose del Cabo, it a lot of times gets interchanged very often. So you'll find in this interview, I'll use the terms both ways. Okay, perfect. And Nick, we are always fascinated to learn about which countries people have considered and why. Now, why don't we delve deeper into Mexico as a whole and then why you chose Los Cabos in particular versus other popular Mexican locations? You know, uh, good question. It was really by chance that I chose Cabo. And really, if it weren't for my wife, there would be no Los Cabos agent or Nick Fong in Cabo. There are other great areas of Mexico, very distinct in their climate, terrain, way of life. And having lived here in Los Cabos for nine years, I can say my decision to pick Cabo has never been regretted, not for one minute. We have perfect weather all year round, and literally it's the sun is shining 330 days a year, if not more. So Nick, talk to me. Pretend you're a map. Where's Los Cabos located in Mexico? Uh, so right south of the San Diego Tijuana border is the Baja Peninsula. A lot of people know the Baja Peninsula. They have heard of the Baja 1000 and uh, a lot of movies are take place in the Baja. And at the very southern tip of the Baja Peninsula, a thousand miles from San Diego is where Los Cabos sits. So if we are flying into Los Cabos, is there an airport there, or we fly in someplace else and drive into Los Cabos? Nope. There's a airport, international airport with nonstop flights from the United States and Canada daily that are right to Los Cabos. The airport code is SJD, stands for San Jose del Cabo, and um, it's really what has put us on the map for our Northern America uh, neighbors. That's fantastic. And Nick, we have gotten to know you both personally and professionally. Reasons why you chose Mexico and why Los Cabos speaks to you. But get ready, because now it's time for us to pick your brain on the local real estate scene and to get the juices flowing. We're going to do a quick round of what I like to call the real estate hot seat. We'll ask you five rapid fire questions and you give me an answer in 15 seconds or less each. Nick, are you ready for the Los Cabos hot seat? Let's do it. All right. What currency is local real estate priced in? Real estate is priced in U.S. dollars. Is owning property as a foreigner legal? It is. A uh, foreigner set up a real estate trust called a fido comiso in Spanish, and it's similar to owning a trust back home. For example, a living trust, a family trust, and I help all my buyer clients set up this trust. Can property be titled? Yes, property is fully titled. It is fee simple ownership, and you, in fact, can actually get a title insurance policy on your property. Can money flow in and out of Mexico easily, or are there currency restrictions? You know, one of the big benefits my clients find is that they can easily set up Mexican bank accounts, send and receive money from Mexico. It is almost as easy as sending money within your own home country. And as listeners know, Nick, my number one question, what is your favorite local drink? Taylor, that's an easy one. A lime margarita on the rocks. So I have to ask, what kind of tequila are we using? You know, my favorite is Patron. The good stuff? Yes. Nothing but the good. Hey, Nick, if you don't mind me asking, can you kind of better explain what your personal day-to-day -day cost of living is like in Los Cabos as compared to Chicago? Yes. You know, that's a very common question that I get from my clients. And Cabo is a tourist destination. So if you are going out eating at the restaurants the tourists are eating at, you're not going to see a big change in price uh, from living back home to living in Los Cabos. But where a local will learn very quickly is where to eat at the local restaurants, 
what local stores to frequent, and all in all, the cost of living in Los Cabos is much less than uh, living back home for me. And then do you deal mostly in pesos or is it dollars in Los Cabos? We deal in both, but most of the stores are peso based. But if you do have U.S. dollars, they will accept U.S. dollars and just do a conversion rate for you. Okay, Nick, you can now relax, but just a little bit, as you are off the Los Cabos hot seat. But it's time to zero in on the local real estate scene. Give us your brief synopsis on the Los Cabos real estate market over the last few years, where it is today, and then where you see it heading for the next few years. Okay. Wow, that's a, that's a big question because Cabo <laughs> has experienced a, a good 15 years or so of solid growth with uh, a lot of hotels residential developments, commercial projects, starting back in the early 90s and carrying us through to about the middle of 2008. It went from a small fishing village to a true destination spot in a little over a decade. But our market did take a big hit starting in late 2008 and through the past four years. In some areas, prices fell as much as 50%. But as much as what we have seen in the U.S., the market has slowly rebounded. The prices to go were the fire sale, desperate seller situations. But those opportunities have started to thin out quite a bit. And we're starting to see a more traditional market now. Surprisingly, inventory is extremely low for good quality products, properties, condos, uh, houses alike. And to me, this is a good indicator as we are starting to see prices to increase. So, Nick, in your business, what's your typical clientele? Uh, My typical client is someone from either the United States or from Canada. Typically, their age demographic falls between 40, 60 years old. They are a lot of times upper middle class and... A lot of them are small business owners, people that have, they may not be retired now, but have the, because of owning their own business, have very flexible schedules to come and go between their home city and Los Cabos. So Nick, talk to me. Of course, we know that in Mexico you speak Spanish, but in Los Cabos, do you have to be fluent in Spanish? Do you have to be conversational or you don't even really need to know Spanish to kind of get by? You know, many of our expatriates that do live in Los Cabos at least half of the year don't even speak Spanish. Um, It's very English friendly. And although it helps to speak Spanish, it's not a prerequisite at all. Well, Nick, you have a sold on Mexico as a country, Los Cabos as a location, and then a real estate outlook within the near future. Of course, you don't have a crystal ball. I sure as heck don't. No one does. But that is why I think it's so vitally important to get on the ground insight from local real estate professionals. And yes, Nick, I just use the words local and on the ground in the same sentence to drive home a very important fact. You are not some newsletter writer who might spend a few days in Los Cabos and then send out emails with hot buys calling yourself an international real estate guru. You are there in the trenches on a daily basis dealing with local buyers, sellers, agents, lawyers, and every facet of the real estate business. Nick, break this down even further for us. Pretend you are Google Maps or Google Street View. What streets, neighborhoods, or parts of the city are we talking about in Los Cabos? Okay, uh, another very uh, big question. As I had mentioned earlier, Los Cabos literally translates to the Cape. So the two most famous capes in Los Cabos is San Jose del Cabo, where our international airport is located, and Cabo San Lucas, home of the famous Arch. And it's between those two towns of San Jose del Cabo and Cabo San Lucas. There's about a 20-mile stretch of beautiful Sea of Cortez beaches, with hotels, golf courses, houses, and condo developments. This 20-mile stretch is referred to as our tourist corridor. Now, 95, 90% of our real estate activity is either in these two towns or in the tourist corridor. Now, Cabo San Lucas is at the tip of the Baja Peninsula. And so the east side of the peninsula is where the San Jose del Cabo is located in an area that we call the East Cape. 
on the west side of the peninsula is the Pacific Ocean with a popular artisan town called Todos Santos, which is about a 60 mile drive from Cabo San Lucas. Interestingly, we're seeing increased interest on both sides of the peninsula, up on the Pacific side and the East Cape, where prices tend to be a little bit less expensive, but with the lower price tag, people will have to take into consideration they may not be on the grid. They're using solar energy and trucking in their water and dealing with well water. So it's a combination of all those areas that really makes up what we call those cabos. Talk to us about the weather. Do you guys have two seasons, a wet and dry? Do you have four seasons? Talk more about what the weather is like on a day to day basis. Sure. Well, one of the things and the one of the biggest attractions to Los Cabos is the weather. And we really only have two seasons, I would say. We have the summer months, which is when it'll get into the mid 90s, possibly upper 90s, has a little bit more humidity in the air. And that will be July, August, September. And then the other nine months is literally 80 degree weather during the day, maybe drip dips down to the 60s at night, zero humidity, and literally sunny every day. There's, there isn't even a weather channel here. We do not pay attention to the weather other than during the summer months when we do tend to get 90% of our rain, I would say. But with that being said, it rains maybe 12 days a year here in Los Cabos. So Nick, I'm curious, do you guys have high seasons or do you guys have tourist expats there all year round now? Well, it's, it has grown to where it is all year round, but the bulk of our expat tourists um, are coming during the November to May time frame. So Nick, now that we have specific locations in mind, what types of properties do you recommend? And first, let me give you a few brief examples of what I mean. Are we talking about buying pre-construction units for capital appreciation that we later flip? Are we talking about buying completed apartments, houses, or office spaces to generate rental income? Or are we talking about buying land to either sell as is or subdivide into smaller tracks? Nick, give us a better idea of what you are talking about today. Really, there are all types here in Los Cabos. For example, for the investor type, I have a house right now on the market that rents well over 200 days a year, probably grosses well over $120,000 for the owner, and can really be looked at as a turnkey rental business. And also, when you're not renting it the other 100 days, 150 days a year, it could be used for your own personal satisfaction. You could come for a week, two weeks, a month vacation and use the house and have the rental money pay for the maintenance of the home. And after that, still have probably a 10% return on your money. And another popular thing right now is buying existing homes and condos that aren't necessarily rental properties, but very nice properties and that are sold fully furnished. This is something my clients are really amazed at when they come to Cabo. They see furniture in the homes and they can't believe that the majority of those homes for sale are sold with the furniture in them. <laughs> it it kind of makes sense because most of those properties are foreign owned. And when the sellers sell the homes, they don't want to worry about moving that furniture back to the States or Canada. They would much rather sell the property, uh, move in ready and make it uh, a much easier sale both for them and for the new owner. And then finally, as I was mentioning earlier, the market is rebounding. And so we're starting to see some more investors come in, buy land that they're looking to build on speculation. So basically building homes on vacant land. This was definitely a huge trend in the early and mid 2000s and was a big reason why our real estate market grew so quickly. Now, with that being said, I don't suspect the same kind of run up on prices we had in the past, but probably a more steady, stable growth pattern that we typically see in a traditional real estate market. And then, Nick, before we move on to prices, I just wanted to make sure home prices are priced in dollars, but the real estate contracts would be in Spanish. Is that correct? Well, good question. The 
transaction is in U.S. dollars. The sales contracts are both in English and in Spanish. The actual title that it gets transferred is in Spanish, yes. Right, so all contracts that you'd be signing, of course, you'd have translated to English if that's your language to read, but they're legal in Spanish. That is correct. Okay, perfect. And Nick, now I'm going to hit you up with a two-part question that I know everyone wants to know, and you have to give us a general range. So we have some price points in mind. Here they are, part one. What would be the price range of what we are talking about? Maybe give us a starting price point at the low end to a final price point at the high end. And Nick, just to clarify, I'm talking about total purchase price. Got it. Well, prices for us in Los Cabos start on the low end for a one-bedroom ocean view condo for as low as 50000 U.S. And up to the bulk of our market, which is primarily two- to three-bedroom condos and homes with an ocean view, they'll have... Uh, they'll be located in a gated community with a community pool, 24-7 security. And those price ranges are between two and $400,000. Our market also has some very high-end communities and properties that can be in excess of $10 million or more for a single private residence. So we really have everything. And then why don't we transition to a part two? I know it's very tough, but I'm going to ask it anyways. What would be the cost per meter? Again, a starting price point at the low end to a final price point at the high end, just for a general range, Nick. Sure. On the low end, I would say about $1,000 per square meter and in upwards of over $10,000 per square meter. And for listeners like me who are used to dealing in square feet, divide the number you hear by 10.76 or maybe just a flat 10 to keep it easy and you get close enough numbers to get an idea to what Nick is referring to. Okay, Nick, this is a question I like to call, what would sister do? My 40-something-year-old sister calls you up, says she has X amount of dollars to spend. You know, you can't let my sister down, Nick. Share with us three specific examples you would show her and explain why these make sense. Well, Taylor, if it's your sister, I'll definitely take care of her. And (laughs) if I were to give her three options under, let's say, $300,000, I would offer the following three options. I have a house that's um, in the community called Punta Arena. It is house number F4. And this house is currently listed for $179,000. It's a three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bathroom house. And it is the lowest price art view home in all of Los Cabos. Recently painted on the inside and sold fully furnished. Second on my list that I would consider for your sister is a house located in a small gated community of Coto San Diego, house number 19. This is actually a townhouse and it's the lowest priced four bedroom property on the tourist corridor. Highly upgraded floors, kitchen, furnishings and decorations. The fourth bedroom can be a separate lock-off area that can be used as a guest casita or in-home office. It is sold 100% turnkey and ready to move in. The final one for your sister, Taylor, is in a different community called La Vista. It's a three-bedroom condominium, unit D201. This was a professionally decorated three-bedroom, three-bathroom condo with ocean views, 24-7 secured and gated community. Although... It is a condo. It shares no walls with its neighbors. And here's the great thing. With all of those amenities, very low HOA fees of only $100 a month. I think those three options, Taylor, for your sister would be a great start. Nick, those were three great options for my sister, but I have to ask you a follow-up question if you don't mind. We talked about earlier about your average clientele, their age. What are they looking for to invest in for the most part? Very good question. For the most part, what I found, my clients are looking for a property that are in between the two to four hundred thousand dollar price range, two to three bedrooms, gated community with a minimum of security and a community swimming pool, and having ocean views. Another great big trend here in Los Cabos is the need for single level living. So. It might have stairs in the house, but if the living area and at least one bedroom is on the lower level, it really addresses a lot of my clients' concerns. So do they move down 12 months out of the year, six months out of the year, three months out of the year, that kind of thing? 
the majority of my clients are here only, I would say, three months out of the year. But a lot of them are preparing for the eventual full-time move down here. And so it usually what it starts with my clients is it starts as a vacation for one week. The next vacation becomes two weeks up to a month. They end up buying a place. They spend a few months, a year, and then eventually they find themselves down here the majority of the time. Well, Nick, we are laser focused on specific areas of Los Cabos. We know our starting price point. We have an idea of cost per meter. We have three specific examples, which are good enough even for my sister. Now, I have to ask you an obvious question. How do we buy? Do we need to come in with all cash, whether that's from our checking account, home equity line of credit, or retirement funds? Or can we come in with a certain percentage down and get local financing from a bank or credit union? 90% of our home purchases are done with cash. The other 10% are either private lenders or seller finance sales. So traditional bank lending as we know it for the time being doesn't exist. Now, with this being said, I have had clients use 401ks and IRAs if they're from the States to purchase investment properties here in Los Cabos and through a self-directed IRA, which is a slick way to buy property here in Cabo with no early withdrawal penalties or taxes. Definitely contact me on that for more information if interested. Also, with seller financing, I've been successful in doing a dozen or so of these type of transactions for both my buyers and sellers. Hey, Nick, so I'm curious, if 90% of the home purchases are done with cash, where are they getting that cash? What percent would be cash sitting in a checking account? What percent might be like a second mortgage on their house or home line of credit? And then what percent might be doing a self-directed IRA? Okay, I would say definitely the minority are in the self-directed IRA. That probably is only is less than 5%. The majority probably 60 to 70 percent is cash that they have in their checking or savings and the other 20 25 percent is they're leveraging properties back home through a home equity line of credit or a cash out refinance on their primary residence and using that those funds to purchase a property here in los cabos So then one follow-up, I'm curious, when they're not using the property a few months out of the year and they're back in the States or Canada or their home country, what do they do with their properties in Mexico? You know, I'm seeing a growing trend of my clients uh, renting their condos out, renting their houses out when they're not using them. When the times were really good, the markets were very different, the majority of my clients actually didn't rent them. But they see a lot of potential money to be made when they're not using it, not necessarily to make the money, but pay for the maintenance of the house, offset some of their closing costs that they had when they purchased the house, things like that. So I would say that right now, half of my clients are renting their properties and the other half continue to leave them uh, vacant when they're not using them. So Nick, I'm curious, do you handle buyers, sellers, as well as vacation rentals? Yes, all of the above. Okay, Nick, I have one more question and then I'll let you get out of here. Anyone who has ever owned real estate can tell you, you need to have a money exit strategy in place even before you buy. It's something what I like to call, where's the cheddar? You are buying the property to do what with it to make some money. So Nick, where's my cheddar? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, right now, most of the properties still on the market are I guess what I would call in the cheddar, so to speak, but specifically those properties that have a proven rental history that are located close to the beach, downtown, and or near amenities are a for sure way to know that you are buying something now that you will be able to sell and make money on the property in a few years. Well, Nick, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to share with us about Los Cabos Real Estate. We have heard about your journey, why you chose Mexico, exact areas of Los Cabos to focus on, price points to look out for, specific examples good enough even for my sister, a money strategy to purchase, and then what we might do with it after the fact to make some cheddar. Unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye. But before we do, share with us easy ways to get a hold of you, any parting advice you might want to share, and then let's say goodbye. Hey, thanks to you, Taylor. It's been a pleasure. And if you need to get a hold of me, the best way is by email, which is info 
at LosCabosAgent.com. Or you can always reach me on my U.S. number, which is 312-725, and my last name, F-O-N-G. Once again, 312-725-FONG. And my website is www.LosCabosAgent.com. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Awesome, Nick. I have really enjoyed this conversation straight from Los Cabos, Mexico to our earbuds. And I hope we can catch up again in three to six months. Hey, Taylor, I most certainly welcome that as our market has been changing almost quarterly. If we touch base in another six months or so, I'm sure to have some interesting things to report back to you and your listeners. Take care. I want to thank Nick once again for taking us south of the border and exposing why Los Cabos is one of the top destinations in Mexico for quality of life lovers. Nick's episode is one of my favorites yet as his real estate savvy and easy demeanor is the kind I gravitate towards and I can't wait to get him back on the show again soon with more specific Los Cabos real estate investments he believes you need to hear about right now. If you're listening to this podcast and want to grab Nick's contact details, links on buying or selling Los Cabos real estate, or any other show notes, head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash 29. Are you a real estate agent, owner, or developer? Do you have properties located in the world's most desired hotspots just waiting for buyers? Well, guess what? I want to help. As host of a five day a week, number one rated overseas property insider podcast with listeners in over 41 countries and growing every day with top rated episodes from the world's largest house sitting site, the number one online vacation rental marketplace, the premier self-directed IRA company and the numerous House Hunters International alums from Europe, Asia and Latin America. I have been left with one big problem. I need more properties. Whether you're a homeowner in Canada, a developer in Spain, a broker in Greece, or an investor in the U.S., I invite you to share your properties with my eager audience. Head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash 29 to get started. You have been listening to the IREL Podcast with Taylor White. Be sure to hit up IRELpodcast.com for more. That's IRELpodcast.com. Thanks for listening.